Firstly, Happy New Year to all those that I haven't seen yet. It's so good to see you all. Happy New Year. It's a new year. Can you believe it was only a week ago, New Year's Day? It's, I don't know. It feels like so much has happened in that time. Um, I, I just want to start by, uh, by sharing a little bit of, um, bit of sad news. You, you might have noticed Andy and Beth and our senior pastors are not here today. So Andy very sadly lost his dad this week. And um, yeah, so uh, it, I, I, ju- I just want to pray for them. Uh, is, that, is that okay? I'm just going to take some time just to pray for them now. You know, we, we love them dearly and, and, and going through Losing someone is just so hard, isn't it? And, and so we, we want to stand with them. But also I'm aware that there are others of us who have lost people, you know, over these last days and, and weeks as well. So let, let's, just pr- let's just pray for them right now. Lord God, we, we just thank you that you are the God of all comfort. And we pray that your comfort would be with Andy, Beth, and Ruth, Jamie, and the rest of the family right now. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just come and, and just be so present with them as they, as they process everything that, that's gone on. We pray that they would know your peace that surpasses all understanding. So Lord, we lift them up to you. We lift up everyone who is, who is grieving right now and we, we place them in your hands. And may they know your presence so closely. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Wonderful. So I, I, it's just, it, it's hard to, <laughs> to kind of follow on from that, but I, I just want to start with, with an update um, this morning. So over the last couple of years, um, we've been talking about becoming one church in many places. And what that means is we have a site here in Feltham. Um, myself and Kathy, my wife, are, are site pastors for the Feltham site alongside an amazing service pastors team. I think there's a slide in a moment that will come up with that. Um, and then we've got Beth and Andy who are serving as acting site pastors for Staines. Um, I do want to reassure you, though, that Andy and Beth are still senior pastors they still, you know, we're still, there's still a pastoral team that we're, we're responsible for the whole of, uh, of the church as well. So um, if you click onto the next slide there, Joel, you're just, uh, just a reminder of that. Um, now, I want to take you back to January 2020. Things were somewhat different then, weren't they? Um, Andy gave us five reasons why we're pressing into this idea of one church many places and why we sense the Lord is calling us into this. And, and he gave five reasons. The first one is because the Lord has spoken. You know, we, we really feel that he has spoken very clearly on a number of occasions about this. And, and when the Lord asks you to do something, the best response, I think, is always yes, and to then fully commit. And for the second reason is for those that are not here yet. So the region that, um, that Riverside Vineyard covers has a population of one million people. And of those, 93% don't profess to have an active Christian faith or connection with any kind of church community. So that's 933,000 people. And so we want to effectively reach the 93% who many of us live near, but who are much less likely to travel to Felton for an event or a service. The third reason is for greater local impact. Being local basically means that we can better serve the needs of the local community. The fourth reason, we want to do family well. You see, more, more sites will allow us to grow whilst maintaining a family feel. And the fifth thing is everyone gets to play. You know, more sites mean more opportunities for more people to use their gifts in stains. So that's not only in Staines, but here in Feltham too. So where are we at with Staines? I'm going to invite Dave to pop up and just share a little bit. You might want to grab a microphone so we can hear you. Dave, why don't you tell us a little bit more about where we're at with Staines? Yeah, great. Hey. So, um, yeah, a few things have been going on. We have been having some meetings and doing some different bits. So since, since September... 
we, back in September, we had two small groups meeting in the area. Since then, it's grown to six, which is really exciting. We also had a carols event at the Bells pub in Staines before Christmas. Uh, filled the room with people. Uh, friends were inviting friends and that kind of thing. It was re a really good time. Uh, we've been praying around the town as well. Some brilliant times of worship. The Lord has, has been moving. It's, it's been really great to see. Just You can tell something is happening. So the next step is prepare for Sunday gatherings. That's what we're aiming for next. And a big part of this is going to be the next three months we are having big groups, all right? So there's one on, like I think it's like February the 10th, and then, that's right, March the 10th, and then April. So if you're interested, if you want to be part of this, if you want to check it out, see what it's about, we really, really need you guys to be part of these big groups, okay? So I don't, it, unless, unless you've got a broken leg, but I think even if you've got a broken leg, you could probably come to the big groups, okay? It's going to be good. We're going to meet for worship and teaching and some prayer ministry and ju just to share vision together and hang out. Uh, it's going to be really good. So it is Thursday, the 10th of February, and you can sign up online. So go to riversidevineyard.com forward slash stains. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other events going on as well. So, yeah, go to that page and you can find out and sign up. We'd love you to guys to be part of it. If you are you know, in that area, you want to be, see what's going on. Amazing. Right. Thank you, Dave. So that, that date is critical. So the 10th of February. If you want to be a part of what's going on in Staines, basically be there. Or, uh, yeah, be square or whatever. You know? So just that, that is a critically important day and just kind of working out how we can move forward with everything. Okay, so before I start the main part of what I'm, what I'm sharing, I just want to give a huge amount of credit to Andy, who has prepared a lot of this talk, um, and then I've taken it on, so uh, hopefully I haven't ruined it too much, but I hope that you guys hear what the Lord is, is, is wanting to speak to us about this morning. So I want to say, how many of you in the room, maybe you want to indicate online as well, how many of you have met the Queen? Okay, we've got a couple here. Two? Okay, so two in the room. There may be more online. Um, well, this is, uh, this is Marcus Rashford behind me. And you can see he's not meeting the Queen. He is meeting Prince William. Um, now, I don't usually like to highlight football players from that team that he plays for that I'm not going to mention. But he is an exception. I think he's, what he's done in this last year has been truly inspirational. And he is receiving his MBE from Prince William on behalf of the Queen. You see, the Queen is one person, and there are way too many places that she needs to be, awards that she needs to present, people that she needs to meet. So there are many others that stand in for the Queen, members of her family like Prince William, but also others as well. And they act as like a personal representative of the Queen as if she was personally there. So if there was a march past, they'll receive the salute, um, when that person walks into the room, everyone stands as if the queen has walked into the room. Now, I wonder, you might be wondering why I'm sharing this. You see, as followers of Jesus, we believe that he is the king. That literally, that's literally what Christ means. It's not a surname, it's king. Jesus king. The coming of Jesus 2,000 years ago brought in a new age, a new experience of God's kingdom. He embodied the rule and the reign of God, living with incredible authority. We see stories in the Gospels, don't we, of him turning water into wine, of calming storms, walking on water, healing the sick, setting people free from oppression, even raising the dead. And he brings a message of good news and freedom. And the authority that he has is as the king. But then incredibly, we see in the Gospels, Jesus, he empowers his disciples with that authority to do what he was doing. We often talk about in the vineyard doing the stuff. That's, that's the kind of thing we're talking about here. And Jesus' last recorded words to his disciples were this. In Matthew 28, he said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. And then we see in the book of Acts, the disciples go and they do the very things that they had witnessed Jesus doing. And the gospels are like the start of a new chapter, authority given to the disciples, which is to be continued 
by people who say yes to Jesus, i.e. you and me. And it's a thought, again, that was picked up in the New Testament letters. Um, 1 Peter 2 verse 9 talks about a royal priesthood. Now, many of us might have heard lots said about that priesthood bit, how through Jesus we have access to God's presence. But much less is generally said about the royal bit, about ruling with Christ, about having kingdom authority. How crazy is that? We have kingdom authority. We rule with Christ. And in the same way as we talked about the Queen's representatives, followers of Jesus have a royal commission. Followers of Jesus are kingdom carriers, carrying God's presence wherever we go, knowing that God's power is in his presence. We carry power to heal, to set free, to be good news because we're kingdom carriers. And this is what we're going to be exploring over these next few weeks. Now, if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, you are so incredibly welcome. And one thing I really hope that you hear today is Jesus' invitation to a life that is way more exciting and fulfilling than any of us can imagine. Now, we're going to turn in the Bible to Luke um, chapter 4, and we're going to read two verses that for some of us may be very familiar. And over the next six weeks, what we're going to do is unpack these line by line, exploring what it means to be a kingdom carrier. Now, a brief bit of background here. Jesus is in Nazareth, where he'd been brought up, and he goes to the synagogue on the Sabbath, and he was handed the, the scroll of Isaiah. And Jesus turns to a text that we can still find in, in chapter 61, and we're going to read that in a few moments. He reads the text, and then he sits down, and everyone's eyes are on him. You can kind of imagine the drama of the moment. Now, these these people knew their scriptures. They knew this prophetic text about the coming Messiah, God's King. And then Jesus says, and we read it in verse 21 of Luke 4, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. It's, it's It's a mic drop moment, isn't it? It's just like, you know, the drama would have been in that room. They'd have been stunned by what they heard. So what was it he said? Well, we're going to do something a little bit different this morning. In a moment, what I'd like to invite us to do is to all stand if we're able and to all read the text together. So we're going to use the words that will come on the screen behind me. And as we do that, remember that it's about Jesus, but it's also about you and I as kingdom carriers, as followers of Jesus. So if you're able to, why don't you stand with me and we're going to read this together. Maybe you just want to Yeah, I'm just going to pray for us. Lord, as we we read these words together, may they become more real to us. May we carry these words wherever we go. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence. Come and fill our lives right now. So we're going to read from verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen. Why don't you take a seat and we're going to unpack that a bit together. So today we're going to continue to lay that foundation for this series. So in coming weeks, we're going to look at how we carry healing, um, how we bring freedom how we bring good news to the poor. These are all things that kingdom carriers do. Now, personally, I I love that as a Christian, I'm going to spend eternity with Jesus. But I really love that we get to do some of Jesus' stuff whilst we're here on earth. I love it when we see healing. You know, most Sundays, there are stories of people being healed right here in this room and online as well. I love it when people are set free from fear, anxiety, addictive habits. I love it when those in need receive food and clothing and the news that God loves them. I love what Dora and the team did. You know, wasn't that awesome, that video, just hearing what, why Dora does what she does. 
You know, kingdom carriers bring healing and hope into a broken world. And if you're a Christian and that doesn't excite you, can I just encourage you to check your pulse for a minute? You know, we're called to do the stuff, to carry his kingdom wherever we go. And if you're not yet a Christian, this is the adventure that Jesus invites you into if you'll give your yes to him. A life of doing this stuff becomes possible because as kingdom carriers, we carry the Holy Spirit. Verse 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me. I love those words. This is what we carry into the world. So let's just unpack that together. I'm going to share three thoughts from the text, and then we're, we're going to spend some time praying for one another. So the first thing is being filled with the Spirit. You know, we read in chapter 3 of Luke, the chapter before, that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit when he was baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. The Spirit, we read, like a dove. And only when he's filled with the Spirit does he hear these famous words, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. Isn't, I find that really interesting. You know, maybe I'm sure God has spoken to him before, maybe, but it's only when Jesus is filled with the Holy Spirit does he really understand and hear words about his own identity. He knows who he is as he is filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's with these words, he wanders into the wilderness to be tempted. In chapter 4, we see that. And then again, full of the Spirit in verse 14, that he kicks off his ministry, healing the sick, turning water into wine, carrying kingdom power wherever he went. You see, we need to, need to be filled with the Spirit to know who we are and to carry kingdom power when we go out into our workplaces, into our colleges, supermarkets, even Zoom calls. You know, we can try in our own strength, but even Jesus needed the Spirit to carry God's kingdom into the world. I just want to ask you, just when did you last experience the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? When did you last experience him descending on you? That may be never. That may be a long time ago. When did you last experience him filling you, overwhelming you, saturating you? And I recognize that COVID has changed the way that we do so many things. And, and this is a big example, I think. It's hard for us to give the space and the time just to wait in his presence and to allow him to come and fill us and to saturate our lives. Now, the second thing I noticed with Jesus is that he allows himself to be led by the Spirit. We see that. And just like Jesus in chapter 4, as we are filled with the Spirit, we are led towards the poor, towards the captive, the blind, the oppressed, those in need of hope. You see, we don't have to look very far right now to find people that are lacking hope. We can switch on our TV, watch the news maybe, scroll through our social media feeds, or even, dare I say it, talk to someone, talk to a neighbor, listen to a colleague, chat to someone you bump into in the supermarket. You see, as followers of Jesus, we are actual carriers of the kingdom. And as followers of Jesus, we can, the hope that's inside us can change the atmosphere. I wonder if you ever walked into a tense situation and sensed the tension receding because of what you carry. You see, that's the hope that's inside us. I remember talking to someone in, in, in storehouse in our food back a couple of months ago, and just there was, there was a lot of tension in, in, in that conversation. And, and I just prayed, and you could just see the level of things just kind of like, it just dialed down completely and actually went away a lot more peaceful than he walked in. As carriers of hope, I wonder who is the Lord leading you to this week? Who can you bring hope to? Maybe there's a colleague that you bump into. Maybe there's a neighbor that needs to know the hope and the kingdom that you carry inside you. And the third thing is being anointed by the Spirit. 
The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me. Now, now what do we mean by anointed? It's not a word we use very often. What, what the, you see, let's track back a little bit. The word Christian literally means subject of Christ. And Christ literally means anointed one. Another translation means that we are little Christs. When we give our yes to Jesus, we are little Christ. We carry his kingdom with us. We are his representatives. Like Prince William to the Queen, like other representatives of the Queen, as we go into the world, we carry that around with us. And the anointed one also reminds us of priests in the Old Testament. They anointed with oil and fragrance, and I can imagine you could probably smell them when they were coming. And I found in, in my own life, if I can smell someone when they're coming towards me, that's not normally a good thing. But this is a good smell. This is like, I guess, the best aftershave or perfume. I, I love how um, Eugene Peterson puts it in the message version of the Bible. He says, he talks about us bringing out the God flavors in the world. You know, see, the God kind of smells and that kind of sensation. I love that idea. Now, we might have dreams of seeing the world change. Maybe we hope for that somewhere in our hearts. Maybe that's gone away over these last, this last year plus. Maybe we have dreams of wanting to see God use us in amazing ways. But if we want to see God move through us, first of all, we ourselves need to be changed. Um, Steve Nicholson, who was, who's a, who was a vineyard pastor in the U.S., he put it like this. He said, if we want to see God do something through us, he needs to do something to us. If we want to see God do something through us, first he needs to do something to us. We must be willing to allow him to change us, to be filled with his spirit, to be led by his spirit, to be anointed by his spirit. And it all starts with saying yes to Jesus. And so just in this moment, before we take some time to pray for one another, I just want to give us an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. You know, maybe you've done that before. Maybe you've never said yes to him. And this might be a moment where you can enter into this incredible life, incredible adventure that he would want you to have. He, he comes to give us life and life to the full. So why don't you just bow your heads and close your eyes where you are. I'm going to pray a prayer. And I'd love you to make this prayer your own. Um, and then we'll see what the Lord wants to do after that. So Jesus, I thank you for the invitation that you offer me. The, 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 um, the opportunity to live life to the full for eternity. And I choose to say yes to you right now. I choose to turn away from the life that I've been leading. And I choose to put my hope and my faith in you. So Holy Spirit, would you come and fill me right now? Let me know that you are here with me. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen.